Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, California Weather Watch. Today is September 21st, and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see that low pressure system. Clear as day here across some of Oregon, Idaho, moving down across Northern California and Nevada. You can see it's still kicking off some lightning activity here this morning, or even across the Sierra Nevada. Some stronger showers still rolling around with this upper level low. It's going to be with this for the next couple days. It's going to kick off to the northeast, and our eyes turn towards the Pacific Ocean as this next system starts to march in here and starts to impact areas of Northern California. California and may even bring some precipitation down towards the Bay Area and we'll look at the extended forecast here as well. This is a wider view of things. You can see Tropical Storm Kenneth actually trended a little bit further north here and you can see some of this moisture might actually end up making its way up into California and Arizona and we'll take a look at that. Some models showing a little bit of precipitation occurring with that and bring some cloud cover with it as well. Now taking a look at the upper level low and you can kind of see that thick marine layer along the coastline here up towards 5,000 feet deep including some of the coastal ranges this morning. You may break out here as you go through the afternoon hours, but the coastal areas may actually break out first for some areas as well. But yeah, pretty uh, strong cyclonic flow aloft and bringing an onshore flow, nice moist layer there, 5,000 feet deep. You can kind of see that reflected here in the cross-section Los Angeles International Airport. This is looking at relative humidity, and you can see that getting up towards the 850 millibar line, about 5,000 feet, and kind of relaxing as we go through the weekend, however. Now this is looking at Tropical Storm Kenneth. You can see it. Yesterday, it was a little bit further off to the north and west, but still a storm here by the time we go through tomorrow morning, then becomes a depression, trying to spread some moisture back up towards the north and east of it, towards California and Arizona. And I'm going to do this giveaway here today as well. And <clears throat> I'm going to call this out. If you put the weather station in one of the uh, videos yesterday, I'm going to be doing that random drawing. Everybody is eligible for the giveaway here, and I'll have this sent right to your house. Highly recommend this a very uh, affordable home weather station. Click on the link down below to save 10% off if you want to buy one outright as well. Now taking a look at elevated fire danger, still some low relative humidities and some gusty north winds. There's red flag warnings here, including Redding, just kind of north of Sacramento. Now, looking at that red flag warning, you can see it here on the Sacramento National Weather Service. This goes through about 5 p.m. today. You can see those northerly gusts there. Low relative humidity, so watch out for that and get some fire activity out there with that. They could spread rapidly. Gusty and dusty. Look at the Las Vegas National Weather Service forecast here. You can see better chances for showers the further you go north of Las Vegas across Nevada into Utah here. And you see some gusty winds. Look at Vegas calling for 40 miles per hour. Could get some gusts up towards 50 miles per hour across some of the desert areas and the higher peaks here in Nevada and the higher terrain of Southern California as well. Off towards St. George, look at a uh, mead view there, 40 to 50 miles per hour, Kingman 30 to 40 there as well. So heads up for that. This should be relaxing over the next few days. And check it out, Phoenix, Arizona. What a nice stretch of weather, at least compared to the summertime temperatures there. Look at this, the temperatures just uh, right there in the 90s. Very mild for Phoenix. September 21st, 1983. Check it out again with the remnants of Hurricane Manual, the tropical systems, and usually the headline this time of year. In 2007, pointing out some lenticular clouds across the higher terrain as well. Now, looking at the wind advisory here for some of the higher terrain, and just off to the east of the grapevine does include uh, California City and Ridgecrest there, for example, gust to 50 miles per hour. So watch out if you're out in the backcountry there driving a truck or what else, and you're across some of the higher terrain. Should be gusty as we go through, especially this afternoon and evening today. We'll take a look at the wind on the NAM 3KM here in a moment. Day one thunderstorm outlook across the Sierra Nevada. Some of those ongoing as we speak. In fact, let me click on that Doppler and you can see it here. This is a combination of all Doppler. So the resolution isn't great, but you can kind of see some of the heavier showers still roll, rolling around Yosemite National Park there. And just off to the west of Bridgeport. Now kind of moving across South Lake Tahoe there off to the south. Moving towards the east as we speak. And kind of see that general thunderstorm risk there in the green line as this upper level low continues to spin across the area. Now let's bounce back to that here if I can find it. And day one, day two, you can see that threat push off to the east. Now here we're looking at 10,000 feet. You can clearly see this bowling ball of cold air just kind of spinning over the region. Starts to kick out to the east here through Friday. And then we turn our eyes to that Pacific storm track starting to march in towards Pacific Northwest. And it looks like it's going to impact portions of Northern California and maybe bring some precip all the way down towards the Bay Area as well. This is looking at composite reflectivity. You can see the upper low spinning, the shower activity ongoing this morning. You can see some wraparound moisture occurring across Nevada, Utah, 
Wyoming up there in uh, Montana. But look at that. There comes Kenneth right there, bringing some precip on the NAM3 cam. And like the Los Angeles uh, National Weather Service Office said, sometimes the models don't do well with picking up just the amount of moisture that some of these systems approaching from the southwest bring. So it will bring some cloud cover, and it could bring some precipitation. Doesn't look like anything too heavy right now, so you can see some moderate rain in there also, maybe kicking off a couple of thunderstorms. And then you see the next system there arrive at the very end of the NAM 3 km run as it starts to bring some precip towards Northern California. Pacific Northwest is going to get pretty wet here over the next week or so as well. NAM 3 km precipitable water, and I'll put this into motion, just kind of showing you that subtropical moisture moving up from Kenneth across California and Arizona. They're kind of an interesting look at it. 60 hours out, the model ends right there. Now, looking at the 80 meter wind speed, you can see some of the gusty winds there across them in Northern California with that red flag warning. And then as look as we go through the afternoon and evening hours, you can see some of these ridge top winds out across the desert areas. That's going to be the windiest time as we go through tonight. And then these gradients will start to weaken as we go on into Friday, as you can see there. Now, looking at relative humidity, this is why the red flag warning is out. You can kind of see those really drop off in that rage and the red flag warning mimics this, this shape of that low relative humidity there quite well but yeah that's why that's out for uh you know places like redding and yeah so watch out you know it really goes anywhere across california there's still some you know it was summertime and we didn't get a lot of rain across some of the bay area here as well so the vegetation can be still pretty dry no matter how wet we were last winter and spring Looking at the European, there goes our upper level low spinning. The GFS is here on the right, and there goes the big deep trough across the Pacific Ocean, bringing that system into Northern California. And then we start to get a little bit of model disagreement here as we go out to the 130 hour plus range, as you can see some of the difference in timing here. And you see the European wants to build a ridge over the Southwest as we get off onto the mid portion of next week as well, and then swing another trough through the Pacific Northwest. And then maybe some troughing here, kind of some agreement with that with the GFS as well. But right now, the main takeaway here is that upper level low kicking out and then this next Pacific system bringing some potentially heavy precipitation to Northern California, hopefully bullseyeing some of those uh, complexes of fires out there as well. And, you know, at the same time, hopefully not dropping too much rain on some of the burn scar areas. This is looking at Northern California coastline. You can see maybe a moderate, strong atmospheric river. But again, this time of year, like I said yesterday, these are mainly beneficial and it just depends on what you've been getting like i said if you've been getting flooding conditions and a lot of rainfall and it's getting into the later portion of winter then yeah these atmospheric rivers can be a problem or if you're dealing with burn scar areas and you dump a bunch of precipitation but atmospheric rivers not to um, be a, a scary term you know this is just something that we deal with on a yearly basis they're always present across the planet and we're just trying to describe the atmosphere best we can based on integrated vapor transport and duration mm -hmm. And uh, this, again, kind of highlighting that, and this was from yesterday as well. But we'll look at that here more now. You can see the atmospheric river into BC as we speak. You can see other atmospheric rivers across the Pacific Ocean here. You can see Kenneth, subtropical moisture, trying to stream up to the north. And then you can see the deep trough setting up here over the Pacific Ocean and bringing that strong frontal system into the Pacific Northwest and eventually Northern California here as well. So that will be that atmospheric river that I just talked about there. Should be beneficial this time of year. Looking at the European, last night's run, 0Z, upper level low, spinning over the area. There goes Kenneth. You can see it bringing some precip across the higher terrain and maybe some of the desert areas here and across the northern Arizona portions. As we go on in through this weekend, this would be about Saturday morning here. Then you're looking on into Saturday night. And then the next system starts to arrive here. Look at that deep low spinning that atmospheric river into California, maybe clipping some of the Bay Area and some of the northern Sierra Nevada as well. And then look at the next atmospheric river in the Pacific Northwest as well. Kind of interesting precipitation totals there, but not great model agreement when you're looking that far out. You can kind of see the Pacific high spinning out here as well. Now, looking at probability for uh, precipitation over one inch yesterday afternoon's European, and you can clearly see we got pretty good odds here once you get north of the Bay Area and across some of the higher terrain up into Oregon. So, yeah, that's what we'll be, we'll, we'll be watching here over the next few days. Some pretty hefty precipitation amounts showing up. We'll show some of those in a minute. GFS, again, with a greater than one inch or greater, and you can see pretty good odds here as we go through next week of picking up over an inch of rain for a lot of areas, including a lot of that forest fire activity there across Northern California. This is total precipitation on the GFS. This is last night's run, 06Z, up our level low spinning. And a little bit of Kenneth, you can kind of see showing up here across some of Arizona. It doesn't show much across the desert areas or higher terrain of California. Then the next system rolls in here. Look at some of these totals across Northern California, Southwest Oregon here as well. Some big totals. I mean, you're showing up 
three plus inches for a few favored areas. And then the GFS wants to bring some kind of interesting front off into fantasy land. You're looking at 10, 11 days out right now, but just something to watch and just kind of a curiosity at this point. But yeah, pretty wet period here coming from Northern California. It does look like this is six to 10 day. You can see the below average signal for the West Coast. Six to 10 day precipitation does include Northern California for that above average signal there as well. And this is looking at San Francisco. You can see that it does try to wring out a little bit of moisture down here, maybe a tenth of an inch or two as we go on in through what this is about uh, during the later portions of Monday into Tuesday. We'll be watching that here as well. As we get a few days closer, we're going to get better. Um, you know, we'll get a better signal on exactly what is coming. And this is for Redding. You can see some pretty juicy precipitation totals of control showing up over two and a half inches in a 24 hour period for Redding Municipal Airport. And this is out towards Eureka as well. Look at the control, just about three inches of rain in a 24 hour period. And the ensembles are pretty wet here as well. As we go on in through Monday into Tuesday, and this is Red Bluff showing some pretty good precipitation amounts coming across the region also. National blend of models, temperature is not too bad this time of year, kind of pretty typical stuff here. As we bounce back from the upper level low, you can kind of see the chilly temperatures and we start to bounce back across portions of Nevada here, but nothing too crazy out there. You know, if you want some heat, go out to Death Valley, still well up above 100 degrees during the daytime highs, but yeah, not too bad out there as far as temperatures are concerned. And this kind of shows that upper level low here, Reno Tahoe International Airport, We're looking at a cross section and you can see the afternoons really warming up here. This would be Friday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday here is that upper level low kicks out of the area and we start to recover in those temperatures. And yeah, interesting stuff here. It's this upper level low kicking off some thunderstorms this morning. And you can kind of see that initial surge of Tropical Storm Kenneth down there trying to bring some precip over the area. We'll look at this a little bit closer tomorrow as well and see what the models are saying. But like I said, it can be underdoing some of the precipitation. So you could even generate a couple thunderstorms and some precip, some cloud cover across the area there. And then the Pacific Storm Track starts to point at Washington, Oregon and Northern California. And of course, we'll look at that again tomorrow. I'll do another video today and I'll give away that weather station. I'll randomly draw somebody out of the comments yesterday and put that up and then we'll have to hope that person contacts me and i will send that weather station out so anyway hope you guys are having a good day uh we'll do this again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then